and quality. It's been more the the uh, performance, you know, in fading channels. So that's what we're hitting first. VHF though um, is a different story. Uh, there we have discovered we've got quite a big margin, and it might be possible to get um, you know the sort of quality we're using now over VHF two way radio very soon. Because there you've got a little more spectrum to work with, and and yeah, also not quite so much noise. Yeah, that's right. Um, the thing that kills the HF channel is this multipath fading. You get bits of your channel wiped out, and that's hell on modems. Um, you, you do also have multipath and VHF, but it turns out that we're already using, with our analog FM, we've got plenty of signal-to-noise ratios to support higher bit rates and are currently being exploited by uh, things like D-Star. All right, so this is what the website looks like for your blog for um, Codec 2. GMSK, that is the same thing that cell phones use, right? Yes, and I think uh, D-Star. Yeah. That's a fairly efficient modem um, okay. that's useful over VHF channels in particular. Okay, so there's plenty of technical stuff here for people to attempt to absorb. A block diagram of how the pieces are going to go together. And uh, Yes, I worked with my uh, colleague uh, Daniel in Canada. And I came up with an idea or some, I did some tests here that indicated we might be able to do about 10 dB better than current FM systems and first generation, what I call first generation digital systems such as D-Star and P25. Um, and so we, I wrote some code to, to do these tests and that, this is a, that blog post there is a write-up of all the tests we did. And Daniel drove around in his car and tested it for real. <laughs> um, and it turns out we were right. Uh, we've got, you know, something like 10 dB of gain over analog FM or first, now that's, um, that's 10 times the power, in other words. Or another way of looking at it is people are currently throwing away 90% of their power uh, for analog FM and, and D-Star. Uh, that's, and that's pretty significant. Um, but this is, this is very early days. Um, yes. Because in order to use something like this, um, you need an infrastructure. Well, in particular, we need radios that will support it. Yeah. Um, um, a lot of the current way data is done is they take a legacy FM radio and put a, a modem on the back through the data port or something, and I've worked out that's where the loss is. Um, you need a proper IQ SDR radio and uh, with a DSP-based modem to get these gains. Okay, so that's a picture at, so, of, what, what you're, of how you've yeah, it together yeah, sort of now. Jury rig setup we did for the experiment, which was an SDR radio, um, a couple of radios, some attenuators, and uh, we actually used a single sideband radio as the transmitter, as that could uh, faithfully up convert. Um, get, there's some losses using FM radios, unfortunately, so okay. we couldn't use those. So to exploit these gains, we need a bunch of new radio hardware, which we're working on at the moment, and we're hoping to come up with something like the SM1000 uh, by the end of the year. That'll be a yeah you know, a couple of hundred buck VHF radio, but that can uh, outperform by a very large margin all the existing radios and and indeed first generation systems. Now, is that um, the same thing as what uh, Bruce and Chris Testa are working with on White Box, or is this something uh, separate that you're working on developing? This is a completely separate project, and we're looking at doing a, a finished radio with filters, um, power amplifiers, and not sort of a, a test equipment uh, style piece of kit. Um, and also, uh, we're looking at uh, just a single band or maybe two band uh, type rather than a, you know, a DC to daylight uh, type design. Okay. So, so a very what, specific application, in particular, to test this uh, this gains that we've demonstrated experimentally, and to see if we can make it work in the real world. So the radio will be dedicated to the mode that you're working on now, but it, it, you know, it'll be upgradable as the uh, as the mode. Of is, course, is yeah, it'll be a software defined radio, but it won't be one of these that covers you know 100 megs to two gig or anything like that. It'll be two meters or 70 centimeters, uh, but it's all going to be open technology, and most of the smarts will be in the software. Um, the only reason I have to build the hardware is because none of the existing radios will do it, uh, including including the white box. So we need our own sort of radio to do it. So we're trying to come up with a fairly simple design that can test this, get people excited, and that'll all be open, and we'll throw it out there for other people to use uh, if they want to incorporate in their own designs or radios. So the next time I sure. talk to Bruce, is he going to be mad at you for for working on something separate, or is there, is this are you guys <laughs> are these guys still getting along? <laughs> he's very welcome to use anything that we're developing, and I'm sure he's got no problem with me using his stuff. Um, most of what I'm doing here is trying to develop software and technology. Um, as I said before, I'm not really product or you know trying to form companies and things. I'm doing it because I have to, uh, to push the art forward, uh, the state of the art forward. So people can then suck up all the technology I've got. Most of it's software. It's open. And just like Flex have done, you know, they can compile it into their own products. One of the things that I recognized when um, ICOM came out with D-Star 
is that in, in order to make this successful, like I said, they needed a full infrastructure. And part of that infrastructure was a repeater system because Simplex yes. has never taken anybody anywhere. Yes. Um, and then Yesu, when they came out with their system fusion, um, recognized the same thing. They, they built, again, a full infrastructure with the repeaters and they haven't quite got all the linking done, but that's coming very soon. Yes. Um, and, and, and that's what makes the user's radio usable beyond five miles to talk to somebody on the other side of town. Uh, you, it doesn't sound like you're in, in the business of building the full infrastructure, but I, no. I'm assuming you recognize that that's going to be needed. I do, but I've sort of put that in someone else's problem. Um, I'm sort of the low-level hardware-y signal processing guy, and uh, the infrastructure, higher levels of the protocol, I like to leave to other people. Can only do so much, and I know where I want to specialise. <laughs> Having said that, um, these radios we're building, will, one of the very exciting features will be a TDMA repeater mode, um, and that means that no diplexer. You'll be able to, um, for a couple of hundred dollars, have a repeater um, that doesn't need a diplexer and occupies only five kilohertz of bandwidth. Now, that's a huge um, advantage over current repeater systems that are running out of bandwidth and, in particular, with the need for splits. You know, they, it's getting pretty hard to squeeze in new repeaters all over the world. Um, this, with five kilohertz of bandwidth and a couple of hundred dollar box on a hill, you can have a repeater that outperforms others in terms of coverage. I'm not sure that, that, um, it, that people will recognize how much you just said. Um, <laughs> no duplexer. And one channel, not two frequencies for a repeater. That's not, right. You know, a lot of people don't don't have a, a good idea of what goes into a repeater. Um, but yes. if for for two meters, particularly, it it takes a uh, a piece of um, you know. Let me find my uh, my big wide shot. <laughs> it, it takes a piece of plumbing about this tall and about this wide and about this deep. It, it's the size of a medium-sized file cabinet. That's the duplexer. That's the thing that works the magic of letting you have a transmitter and a receiver on a single antenna operating at the same time, putting 50 or 100 watts into one side of the coax and not turning the receiver into a burnt little cinder. And you're, <laughs> you're talking about not having to have that. And they are expensive, no. and that uses two frequencies at once. And um, it's, it, it, I mean, physically, it's not complex. It's just plumbing, but it is yes. expensive plumbing. You're talking about not having to do that. How? Uh, time division multiple access. So uh, the transmitter switches off and on, just like a mobile phone, GSM mobile phone. In between, when it's not transmitting, it can receive. So, uh, uh, in fact, not similar to what we're doing at the moment over Skype. I'm sending you a packet of audio, and then you're sending me a packet of, of audio back in the other direction. And uh, somewhere there's a there's a box uh, at the at the phone office or on the internet that's um, you know sending those packets alternatively. So you can do the same thing over RF uh, as well. We can send um, say 40 milliseconds of audio, then switch off our transmitter and listen and uh, wait for your information to come back. It can all happen on one frequency. Um, we're talking about transmitting digital voice in something like um, 1,200 bits per second over this protocol. So you have to double that if you're doing transmit and receive in the same channel because you need twice as much. You're only transmitting for half the time. So you need to transmit it at uh, twice the speed for half the time. But we're still looking at less than 5 kilohertz of RF bandwidth. So that's a fraction of an existing uh, you know, repeater or VHF FM channel. Uh, that we can have a full repeater. And um, it makes band planning so much easier. You don't have to worry about splits and um, you know interfering with other people's repeaters and things like that. So the real, as well as the 10 times advantage in power, we're talking about it, some huge advantages in infrastructure and spectrum reuse. And um, spectrum is the killer. Um, there's only so much spectrum available in the universe and we've got to use it more efficiently. And this technology will let us. So that, it sounds like what you're saying is that will allow signals that are weaker than what is currently copyable with narrowband FM, or you know, what we're yes. using as FM these days, get weaker yes. than that by a considerable margin. Yes, that's right. Um, around 10 dB, we've demonstrated already. Yep. Some folks say that, that D-Star will work better, but it, it doesn't really. Some folks say DMR does. And by the way, DMR, the digital mobile radio or Moto Turbo, um, uses that TDMA technology, but it still requires repeaters and um, all the rest of the infrastructure. What What's yeah. the difference? Why doesn't it, why can't it do simplex or everything on one channel? I don't know. I haven't studied, I haven't studied those particular systems. Um, I sort of get a bit turned off because they're closed and we can't experiment and things like that. So uh, uh, I guess I'll have to look into those a bit more. But what I'm talking about is physically something like a HT on a hill. 
Uh, that's what it will. That's as simple yeah. as it could be. Yeah, that 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 will be amazing. Well, one of the things DMR does is it puts two conversations on one channel, and maybe that's why it needs the rest of the infrastructure. Sure. Seems yeah. to me like if you can get rid of the um, the duplexer, uh, you decomplicated a repeater immensely, and that yes. that's a bigger advantage. So. That's right. Yeah. I think we just broke some news here on this episode. <laughs> Did you have a uh, yeah, it, do you have a time frame? You know, how long it could take before something like this is um, available for me to buy at uh, not Radio Shack anymore, but you know my local ham store. On their current resources, yeah, you know, the best I can sort of aiming for this year. Basically, I'm doing this myself with Daniel, another gentleman. If we can get some help on the RF side, and I know there's a lot of uh, you know good VHF guys out there in the radio land, then we can do this a lot faster. While I'm, I'm playing with radios on my bench in something, yeah, you know, and I'm not real good at RF, uh, I'm not writing the DSP code uh, that I am really good at. So uh, the more help we'll get, and I'd, I'd love to work with this with other hams and make it happen together. But uh, left to the current resource base, and um, you know, by the end of the year, we'll have something that uh, you can buy and run in a you know, sort of experimental box like the SM1000 type form factor. Yeah, and again, it'll be up to someone else to build it into, well, repeater configuration or the rest of the infrastructure. That's really not that far away. You know, cause, well, a cause lot of it's, is... it's all going to be software. It'll be the same box. So the yeah. same box you can put in your car or carry around. I like riding around on my bike with a HT. That's what I'll be doing. Um, and uh, the same box will do all that repeater functionality. You, you, it's a software change. You press a mode button. You, you can tell that it is revolutionary enough that I am. I keep stepping back and not quite believing it and not quite you know, <laughs> wrapping my head totally around it. Well, yeah, at this stage, and that's fair enough. That's why you know we're, we're trying to get to as fast as we can to the point where we can demonstrate this stuff, even if it's a lash-up uh, type situation. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it takes months, you know, get a little modem going or something. It takes quite a few uh, months of my time. But uh, we're making progress. And uh, I, I do believe it's engineering between where we need to go and where we are here. It's not uh, it's not R&D. It's engineering. It's the D side of R&D. Okay. Um, I pushed the uh, contact button here on your website, and eh, nothing really came up. Um, maybe it's it's uh, saying it's ra- waiting for your contact information. How um, How do people find you? It, if somebody says, I can ah, well, help. I can do C code. I can do work. RF. <laughs> I'll check the contacts uh, page after we finish, but that usually works. Uh, yeah, my contact details are pretty easy to find through the website there. I'm active on the Digital Voice and Codec Tube uh, mailing lists, and so all my information is there. All right. Um, any last words to the uh, the ham that says, I don't care about any of this digital stuff. AM phone is the best sounding <laughs> ham radio that's ever happened. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah, play where you like, and I'll play where I will, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, and one, one last thing. Um, I don't know what the rules are like down in Australia, but here in the U.S., our Federal Communications Commission has the idea that a digital signal is either data or it's voice and image, and the twain don't meet. Mm. They, that is not right. They yeah, meet, they meet very arguments. well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to start a flame war on the mailing lists and start defining where digital voice should live in terms of modes or frequencies, and uh, that usually goes on for about a week every time someone raises it. <laughs> yes. I, I've actually come up with an answer to that. Okay. It, it needs to live right on the dividing line in each band between, okay. again, what is in the U.S. is a uh, the, uh, the, the, the CW data side and the phone side. It, there's only one place you can operate, and that is right on that edge. And that's going to be a problem for a lot of U.S. hams because on several bands, you have to have an extra license to operate on the phone side of that. So ah, you know, we're going to we have to tweak it a little bit, but that that's my... That's my solution. That's okay. my that's my sarcastic solution because that is just seeing our rules have yet to catch up with with um, real technology, and and it's not like it's brand new. We, yeah, it's true. There's also other restrictions over the symbol rate of modems. You know, we're stuck at 300 board for one per carrier, so that can be a bit annoying too. Yeah, well, I think uh, in fact US is stuck there. I'm not sure about the rest of the world. But, um, yeah, what are what are the Australian rules for dealing with that? Is it uh, significantly different? You've got a lot more freedom in in doing that. Yeah, for digital voice, I think you need the uh, not the beginner type license, but the one up from that you can use it. Um, the standard license. I don't believe there's a symbol rate limitation for us or Europe, so we got a little bit more flexibility in, in modems. 
Um, and also, I think we're allowed encryption under certain circumstances, such as if you're doing um, emergency work for medical people or something like that, and it's medical records. So you're not a hundred percent barred from encryption. That's my understanding. Okay, so things things are significantly different. You know, we didn't make a big yeah. deal of that you're in Australia. You're in Adelaide, Australia. Yeah, Adelaide, and, South Australia. And I just realized why you are so advanced. For me, it is. Um, <laughs> Uh, for me, it is about 8 p.m. on Tuesday night. For you, it is about 11 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Your day ahead. No wonder you're so That's advanced. Right. And we're in the middle of summer. We just ended summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we had to. Every, anytime you talk to Australia, you have to do that thing about you're in the future. What you know? What's happening yeah, in the future? Can you yeah, pick some right. lottery numbers for me? Things like that. <laughs> apologize for that. Yeah. Okay, David, um, thank you so much. Um, I, thank you. I believe that, that we have something that hams need to absorb here, and it's going to take a while, not just this show. This is going to go on for a while. So sure. we'll go listen to Bruce Perrins, and, and I'll, I'll needle him about White Box and say, it's not doing what, what David wants to do. <laughs> he'll, he'll have an answer for that, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Yep. And, um, and I, I'll end the program the way I usually do. Well, the first thing I have to do is remind everybody if you – got something out of this one and you damn well better have gotten something out of this one <laughs> back there on the, on the shelf is uh, is our chief financial officer his name is arvin the pig uh <laughs> and we're at hamradionow.tv the website right down there uh if you enjoy the program it takes me a lot to get these things on the air it's i'm doing it almost full time and i'm not rich like david is so um stop by hamradionow.tv <laughs> and uh, and help me out and um and then then last but not least uh I, uh, I say I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ, and you can say who you are. David Ray, VK5, Delta Golf Romeo. And then I say over, and you say out, and it works like this. Over. And out.